welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, our segment where we'll take a look at the biggest newspapers across the country and the stories they're talking about. And we've invited this morning legal practitioner Liboros Shoma to analyze the papers at us. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Morning. Thanks All right. We're beginning with the Punch newspaper. The story here says Nigerians will be shocked by those behind schoolgirls' abduction, says Matawale. Governor is saying we're waiting for the arrival of the freed schoolgirls. Commissioner says kidnapped students have not been released. And Commissioner of Police is saying Zafara girls not yet released. This one says Tinobu Buhari weren't arrested for demanding Jonathan's resignation. And that's according to Falunel. Grieving family tackles Lagos Hospital over mechanic's death. NDLEA arrests Algeria-bound trafficker with 1 billion naira cocaine hidden in yogurt. On the top page of the Punch newspaper, this one says, Reps demand documents on 2.2 trillion naira foreign domestic debt utilization. There were plots to kidnap my children during consolidation, says Soludo. Jam to announce sale of 2021 to 2022 form next week. Fuel queues spread over looming price hike. Mr. Oshama, the biggest story on the front page of the Punch newspaper, I mean, we'll go into detail when we, when we uh, you know, begin our topical issues on the breakfast. But let's talk about this issue we saw fake news quote and unquote over the weekend you know that the schoolgirls had been released but the commissioner of police in the states the governor all denying that saying they're yet to be released what are your thoughts on this especially governor matawali's statements saying nigerians will be shocked by those who are behind the abduction of the schoolgirls please um, permit me to tie these headlines quickly okay. for you so you understand what is happening in nigeria rep demands um, document of 2.2 trillion foreign and domestic debt utilization. Um, jammed to announce sale of 2021-2022 um, forms next week. And then um, for Q, Nigeria will be shocked by those behind abductions. So if you look at all of these headlines, there's one common thread, money. You take a loan and um, a loan of 2.2 trillion and nobody seems to understand what that money was used for so the house of rep now is saying look we need to see the documents and how this loan was utilized where and where did we did it go to because the essence of this will be we are not seeing anything on ground yet school children are being abducted in some states now they have um, decided to close schools boarding schools and Jam is selling forms to collect more money from parents. Nobody is concerned about oh how safe are these schools. Yet we are debating should fair price decrease, should it decrease now that the price had gone up at the international market. Nobody is discussing refinery any longer. And in all of this, you know, government is negotiating with bandits kidnappers in exchange. They are bold to tell you that, um, you know, when you take such numbers, you can't, um, we can't rescue them so that they won't be casualty. We negotiate with them first and then get their release. And then some will say they are released. Some will say they are not released. So when you look at all of this, the common denominator is money. So we throw money at problems here. Nobody is willing to solve any problem. And that's why you have you know, all that is happening here. And nobody is bold enough to tell the president that, Mr. President, you have failed. Do you know why? I listened recently to a video of uh, members of the Senate, you know, window dressing the issue. Oh, one even said, we are not asking for his impeachment. All we are asking is he should act. After six, five to six years, you are still waiting for Mr. President to... And he even said it categorically that he will not do anything. They have passed motions. They will not be assented to. They have passed uh, resolutions. Nobody will listen to them. The president won't even address them. Not talk of addressing the nation. Rather, they issue statements and press releases 
through his media aides. And yet, this same Senate, after condemning the last service chiefs through a voice vote, cleared them to, be, to go represent Nigerians in foreign missions. And then we say we are serious as a people. I bet second base, Jerry. Oh my. <laughs> well, well let, I, want, I want your you know, thoughts you know, still on the um, 2.2 trillion naira. Um, it, it, does it have to get to the stage where the reps need to question? Or aren't there, you know... For some persons, for some persons, they feel, oh, maybe the state sat down, look at it, um, the House of Reps looked at it and said, well, um, with this kind of money, and that we are not seeing results, either we want a, a piece of it, or we actually want to know how this money was spent. Let Nigerians see how it was spent. Because you can't just be taking loan and yet... Nobody's seen anything, no, no infrastructure that is commensurate to that amount. I remember and then we want just to talk last about week. the sale of oh, train, a moribund locomotive uh, 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 rail, when the world is moving away from. You, you know? so, and then you look at the amount that is reportedly spent on these roads, ask them how much they spent to, to rehabilitate Todd Milan Bridge. Now you marvel. <laughs> Mr. Oshama, just last week on Friday, the uh, Minister of you know, Finance mentioned that Nigeria will continue to borrow more money. She justified this saying that there needed to be infrastructure works that should be done and more money will continue to be borrowed to finance that. I agree that you will need to borrow. But what we are saying is when you are borrowing for infrastructure, what is the yield on the return of that infrastructure? You borrow a hundred billion naira to finance railway. At the end of the day, what is the cost, original cost of that railway in other climes vis-a-vis -vis your country? And then what is the yield on return? Are you not gradually mortgaging your country to foreigners? A situation where at the end you will need a hundred years to pay back that loan. And, but the repayment period is 30 years. And in 30 years' time, if you are not able to pay, you either borrow another one to pay, or like you, most of the loans are backed by a sovereign guarantee. And so what it means, you waive your sovereignty for these foreigners to come take over that asset and manage it. Very soon, you hear that Chinese people are running your airport or running your railway uh, companies, and Chinese are dictating who should get what, when and how, because you have mortgaged your future to them. It is not enough to say, yes, it is, uh, we need to take loan. But when you are taking loan to consume, how well this same government came on board and said, look, we'll fix refineries. Nobody's even talking about fixing refineries again. Yeah. Nobody's discussing all of that. So that's where the problem is with uh, this uh, loan. These are borrowing. You borrow to consume. You're borrowing to buy expensive cars for House of Rep members, for senators, for governors, for uh, presidency. And yet, the president is holed up somewhere. You borrow to, 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 to finance banditry. You're paying ransom from borrowed loan. And then you say it is for, for development. At the end of the day, what you're telling people is that it pays you know, to go into criminality. And that's why the rep now is telling you, we want to see documents of how this money was spent. Oh, wow. So let's be sure that some of them were not used to pay ransom. Over time, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Nigerians have also heard uh, the House of Reps you know, make similar statements, but you know, still not being able to uh, see uh, a specific you know, results from those House this, of Reps investigations. This time, we, well, just, we know that something will come out of it. Okay, yeah. let's move to the Nation newspapers now and see what we can quickly also find there. Uh, it says there, government negotiating through ex-bandits to free schoolgirls. Also, 28 policemen killed in three months. Police to curb attacks. PTF, 129 million doses of COVID-19 coming, a uh, vaccine rather coming. CBN uh, defended Nair with $10.3 billion. And also, Ondo Hunters rescue seven kidnapped victims. A few others. Council uh, tips seven uh, uh, professors for Lasso VC. Uh, we also can find on the nation jam an institution set June deadline for admission. Ipman, petrol not scarce. There's also fears of uh, a hike in um, petrol price. And also uh, asset managers to supervise 15 trillion naira infra core. All right, um, because of time, let's quickly just go through these ones. Um, and of course, uh, the uh, fear of a petrol price increase again. Let's, let's start with that one. Um. 
would I talked about the consistent fear because your refineries are not working. I don't see where your let me give you an everyday example. You produce yam, but you have to sell this yam to your neighbor, and then who makes pounded yam, and then you buy pounded yam for consumption in your own house. From you can sell those yam, take a portion of it and make food. But that's all we are doing here. We we'll say, oh, the refineries are moribund. They can no longer be fixed. But yet, year in, year out, we pump billions into these refineries. We pay salaries and without producing a drop. And with all of this, why, how can you strengthen your Naira when you keep importing? You import fear, you import toothpick, you import tissue paper, you import almost everything. Including the ones that, you know, you have banned. You will consistently need, next year you will hear that CBN would have to defend the Naira with much more than this. Because otherwise it will be on a free fall. Your trade will never be balanced. And because what you are exporting is not commensurate to what you are importing. Go to our, our ports, they are congested because we bring in almost everything. We still believe that we are giant of Africa. We are giant of nobody. You know? So, and that's why a giant would de negotiate for the release of school gears. Somebody jokingly said, it is only in Nigeria that a, an individual would drive 10 kilometers and will pass 30 checkpoints. But a bandit would abduct 300 gears and drive 300 kilometers and they will not encounter one checkpoint. You know, so when you have all of these, your refineries are not working consistently. There will be this palpable fear of price fluctuation. Will it go up? Because your price will be determined by, you know, foreign, foreigners because you are not producing. It is the okay. man who is producing outside that will consistently determine the price, the cost of landing. So government, anytime government says we are going to stop um, what you call it, subsidizing for I laugh. Because there is no way, apart from the fact that it lines some, some person's pocket, there is no way you will, you will stop subsidizing the product, the commodity, because you are not producing it. So okay. if you keep a, a important, you will continually subsidize All it. All right, Mr. Shema, let's turn to the Daily Independent newspaper. There's so many um, security headlines, but we'll be talking you know, about security in detail in just a few minutes. So let's uh, look at these few stories here. Lack of fiscal stimulus stalls rebound despite near recession ed exit. Lack of fiscal stimulus stalls rebound despite near recession exit exit. So can we talk a bit about this? Because we know that all around the world, countries have not stopped, you know, providing COVID-19 relief packages. I mean, even the U.S. just signed $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief package. Even though, you know, lots of people argue you can't really compare both countries. But the point is that such financial stimulus, such COVID-19 relief packages are still can being injected you, in the economy. Know, in all honesty, ask yourself that we have truly, you know, come out of a session, apart from what's on paper. You know, even if, if you look at the figure, just a slight. And then, you know, government will celebrate. We're out of recession. Just give them another three months. We're back to it. And yet, how do, do economies stimulate, you know, growth? You, there, there's no way you're not going to have, you know, um, uh, either, um, what do you call it, um, social securities. You're, there's no way you're not going to give handouts to your citizens um either through you know voluntary feeding or helping the local businesses you have relations abroad in canada in america in the uk and they tell you we're paid one thousand dollars two thousand dollars you know for not working this is how government pumps back money into the economy you know to circulate but when people are not working money is not exchanging hand and the same government that is supposed to assist by spending, government is not spending, rather they would rather spend on bandits. You know, so businesses won't work. And when business don't work, there is no way you pay salaries. You don't pay salaries, some organizations have not received salaries from since December. And so for January, February, people also who are relying on them for spending also will have nothing to spend. So it trickles down. 
So until until government decides to stimulate the economy, you know, through these handouts, you will just give them another three months. We'll go back into recession. All right, quickly on, because um, we're, we're definitely going to talk security in a bit. Um, there's the one where the president says Zamfara Zamp adduction will be the last. So I'm hoping that will come up later. But I want you to speak on, it's a little controversy between um, Abubakar Malami and Ishe Sagay. They, they seem to be at loggerheads uh, lately. Um, Malami is asking the president to disband the presidential advisory committee against corruption. You know, um, as much as uh, um, I do not um, like um, Malami's um, approach to issue. Uh, truly, what's the use of the Presidential Advisory Committee on uh, Anti-Corruption? They have never been effective. We don't even know that, uh, um, rather constitute the board of the EFCC. Leave all this Presidential Advisory. For me, I think these are ways of settling uh, uh, cronies. Look for something. Mm. Uh, 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 Sagi had never, I've never heard him advise the President on how to tackle corruption. Not to talk of even advising the EFCC. And here, in one breath, yeah, professor said that um, uh, Malame will not allow uh, what's it called, what, what's it called, uh, Bauer to walk. In another bread, he said he's young and vibrant, and that if he is what uh, the country wants now, okay. then that's, uh, so be it. And you know, so it's blowing hot, hot and cold from the same man. And he allows Malame to to take him to the cleaners. His committee had never been relevant since inception. Have never seen where the committee recommended. You know. Even made the recommendations they made, made the government had not obeyed, not even one, not complied with one. Mm. And so, what's use? I wouldn't okay. expect Sagi to have resigned from that committee long ago instead of still just carrying on as um, you know. Baba is old. Baba has a reputation. The Sagi we know those days in the days of Uniben, yes. Professor Eshe Sagi, is not the same Sagi we are seeing today. And one thing is, should also remember is that young people who are growing up now will remember him for his actions in his last days than what we know those days. So, and that's why I, I do not think Baba needs all of this. He does not okay. need all this. Uh, Mr. Shema, we're really running his, out of time. Uh, name um, and reputation just a few headlines here. Years. Just a few headlines here on The Guardian before we wrap up. A uh, new loan benchmark may trigger asset bubble in banks. Uh, this one says, FG says it's set to receive COVID-19 vaccines tomorrow. Government to get 3.92 million instead of promised 16 million doses, says WHO, UNICEF, and uh, NPHCDA. Uh, as well as this one, terrorists kill seven in fresh Kaduna attacks, 300 abductor students not yet released, fuel price hits 300 per liter in black market as scarcity returns. I hope we had time to discuss this, but we don't. So thank you very much, Mr. Liborsa Shama. Yeah, but he's still uh, around. Here. <laughs> uh, that's a good part. So we're, we're going to go on a short break. Um, of course, uh, go straight into Today in History, show um, things happened to, with... Uh, oh, Today in History, back the first day of March, 1971 and... 1997. 1997. And so when we come back, of course, that's what we're going into. Liborsa Shama is still around. And of course, we'll be talking security in a bit.